response to a dramatic surge in COVID case numbers, New South Wales has also tightened restrictions to try and slow the rapid spread of Omicron. It comes as daily case numbers for the state hit another record of close to 6,000 cases in just 24 hours. After taking a break for eight days, QR codes are back. Pretty, pretty like safe, more safe, more secure. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. I don't think they ever should have disappeared in the first place. Check-ins will be reintroduced in retail and hospitality venues across the state as Omicron rapidly spreads. In Queensland, Tasmania, the ACT and Victoria, one by one, mask mandates were brought back. Pressure was mounting on New South Wales to follow suit. Now's the time for common sense not to be stubborn. It's time to listen to the experts and reintroduce the mask mandate in New South Wales. Despite the Premier previously rejecting the call, this afternoon he relented. We've always said along the way that we'll tailor our settings uh, on the evidence and the facts that are in front of us. And we think the changes we've made today are modest and proportionate, particularly as we head through the holiday season. And we've put these changes in place until January 27. From Monday, the two square metre rule is back in cafes and pubs. Those who can work from home are being encouraged to. Overnight, New South Wales recorded 5,715 cases, one death, 347 people are in hospital and 45 in ICU. The state's ICU surge capacity is 1,500. So while we're currently nowhere near capacity, Pressure on hospitals extends far beyond just counting bed numbers. There are currently hundreds of hospital staff either COVID positive or isolating because they are close contacts. And as case numbers continue to rise, the amount of those impacted on the front line will increase too. The state government is also working to secure a mass order of rapid antigen tests to be made freely available. But there's not much detail about when or how. With Christmas around the corner, the hours-long queues for PCR tests continue. For some, getting results is taking days. Hoping to know by Christmas morning, but um, yeah, we, we do have some rapid antigen tests at home as well that we might have to try on Christmas Day. Really worried. They always say 24 to 48 hours. I hope so. <laughs> as children excitedly wait for Santa's arrival, adults nervously hope to get the COVID all clear. Antoinette Latouf, for 10 News First. Masks will become compulsory in more settings here from midnight. The return of face coverings for all indoor settings came as Victoria recorded a spike in COVID cases, more than 2,000 overnight. The acting Premier has moved to reassure Victorians a lockdown is not being considered, but he has urged the Commonwealth to bring forward booster shots immediately. It's a Christmas message unlikely to bring much cheer. Additional measures to slow the spread and to keep Victoria open. Masks will once again be mandatory indoors from midnight in all settings from hospitality to the office. The only exception, private homes. Masks, they're a, they're a very small uh, individual cost for us. Um, they have a a terrific impact on transmission. Not just indoors, but outdoors as well at major events with more than 30,000 people while moving around the venue. Although masks can be removed when seated outdoors. That means you'll need a mask to enter the MCG for the Boxing Day test and while moving to your seat, you can only take it off once you're sitting down. This is a sensible response which will allow businesses to stay open, bars and restaurants to continue to serve customers and major events to go ahead. We usually get about 50% levels of cooperation or compliance uh, with a strong recommendation. It goes to 95, 99% with a mandate. In today's advice, there were two recommendations though. The first, that employees work from home over the festive period. The second, that hospitality venues consider seated only service. And for people to save their dance moves for dance floors in well ventilated outdoor areas. Acting Premier James Molino says the high vaccination rate means no lockdowns. We are not considering going into lockdown and this is the commitment that we gave to the people of Victoria. Under the new pandemic legislation the health advice behind these new measures will have to be tabled to Parliament within seven days. The rules are scheduled to come off on January 12, but the government maintains the best defence is the booster. It wants a target to cut the interval to four months immediately. Boosters uh, give, give a connotation of it's, uh, if it's an optional nice to have. It is not. The third dose is critical. 
It's unclear if Victoria will follow WA in making that third dose mandatory. Patrick Murrell for 10 News First. And Patrick Murrell joins us live now. Pat, what is the state government doing to improve access to booster shots? Jen, Victoria has allocated $30 million to state-run vaccination hubs to work in conjunction with the Commonwealth for the booster program. That means that come next year, Victoria at state-run hubs alone will be able to dish out 900,000 doses of booster every week, many more at pharmacies and GPs on top of that. Temporary sites are being opened up around the city as well, including pop-up ones at shopping centres. Right now, there's one at Emporium, as well as High Point and Eastland, so people can get a shot with their shopping. 28 additional sites will open around the state over the coming weeks. As for the more than 50 permanent sites, they'll have their hours extended to 12 hours a day from the 4th of January. And the Royal Exhibition Centre here will remain open until at least March at this stage. Gen testing queues do remain a problem right across Melbourne, particularly in the CBD, where this morning at 8am people were facing waits of up to five hours. Those hoping to get some relief at the airport will be out of luck. That rapid PCR our testing is now reserved for international travellers only. OK, thank you, Patrick. As COVID case numbers continue to soar across the country, we're being told not to panic just yet. Omicron may be spreading rapidly, but the numbers we should focus on remain low. Antoinette Latouf explains. While the spread of Omicron and case numbers are alarming, alone they don't tell the whole story. Three new preliminary studies suggest Omicron is milder than previous strains. A South African study found people with Omicron were up to 80% less likely to need hospital treatment than those with other variants. Their findings also suggest no difference in outcomes for few patients that end up in hospital. And at the same time, new British research suggests that people with Omicron are up to 20% less likely to be hospitalised. And Scottish findings just published found that Omicron is associated with a two-thirds or 66% reduction in hospitalisations when compared to Delta. So let's take a closer look at New South Wales, which just recorded Australia's higher ever case numbers. Over one week, there's been an explosion in cases. Numbers have more than doubled. In that same period, hospitalisations have risen by 80% and those in ICU by 73%. Total deaths in hospitals sit at seven. And now, while all three studies stress that it is still early days and more research is needed, the data does provide some comfort. And so far, the experience in New South Wales mirrors the findings. Hospitalisations and ICUs aren't climbing at the same rate. Of course, the concern remains that even if Omicron is milder, the sheer number of cases could still overwhelm hospitals. Hundreds of family and friends have gathered for the first of six funerals for the children killed in last week's Jumping Castle tragedy. Zane Mallor has been remembered as a boy who loved dinosaurs and gaming. His mother Georgie describing her 12-year-old son as her protector. Standing bravely before her son's casket, adorned with gaming images, Georgie Gardam spoke of her heartache. You held my hands and kissed my face in all the hard times. You were my man of the house always, my protector, my strength. Zane had autism and ADHD, but more than 300 mourners heard little held him back. He was quick with a big smile and a hug. Smile! Smile! The past year he had grown into a man that finally grew his wings. The 12-year-old loved gaming, playing for hours with mates around the world. After developing a keen interest in dinosaurs at a young age, his nickname online was Jurassic. If I had to describe Zane in only a few words, it would be kind, strong and fierce. He lived life to the fullest and wasn't afraid to show the world who he really was. I love you, Zane. No matter what the weather, we're together. I love you, Zaney. Zane and five classmates were fatally injured when a jumping castle and a Zorb ball were picked up by a freak gust of wind and tossed up to 10 metres into the air. They'd been celebrating the end of the school year. Two children remain in hospital, but their condition has improved from critical to stable. The uncle of one posting on social media, his nephew Declan has put up a hell of a fight, is now awake, but has a long road ahead. A week on from the tragedy, it's a little piece of brighter news for a community grappling with grief.
I love you too. Happy birthday, bub. <laughs> my name is Zane. My heart is pure and my soul is clean. I'll walk beside you through unseen. Nicole Strawn for 10 News First. Australians will splurge almost $60 billion this Christmas and a large chunk of that will be spent in Victoria. Our retail sector is now firmly in the grip of the Christmas rush, but a very special visitor is on hand to help weary shoppers. He's making a list and he's checking in. Did you have to get a PCR test? Of course, we all have to do that these days, yes. <laughs> and check in? Yes, always checking in, that's right. The COVID rules don't bend, even for Santa, who's fielding some strange requests this year. I've had one request for a lifetime supply of tomato sauce. Santa may have brought the North Pole weather with him, but he also drew the crowds. You will probably notice there's a whole heap of men around here at the moment trying to get their last minute gifts. Because there's nothing like buying something for the one you love with less than 48 hours on the clock. They want to spoil uh, both themselves but also their, their friends and family over this period. And so the retail sales have been you know, really strong. Across the six weeks leading up to Christmas Day, Australians are expected to spend about $60 billion. $15.5 billion of that will be spent in Victoria alone. And that's because we've managed to save up a lot of cash during our long lockdowns. So what we're seeing is people are spending that money locally. Now that's music to the ears of retailers. And that trend is set to continue after the big day with more than $5.5 billion in post-Christmas sales expected in Victoria, an increase of 6.6% on last year. And for those considering adopting an animal this Christmas, ho, ho, ho. Santa wants you to remember they're a friend forever. Think hard and long about whether you are able to take a dog or a cat into your life. And if you feel you can, come here. Candace Wyatt for 10 News First.